I was all ready to put the first piece of fiberglass on the boat for the repair, the first repair I'm gonna do on the boat. And it started to rain. You see it dripping in here. When you start a project like this, my thinking is always, you wanna get the thing dried in because the, the water just causes lots of problems. And so my, my first thought is, uh, let's fix the roof, right? Uh, let's get this roof fixed. And so in order to do that though, you know, one thing means you gotta do something else, it's dependent on something else. So uh, what I need to do is I need to get the boat, uh, not, not level so much, I already got it kind of level, but uh, get the inside of it where it got smashed down, get that level. Uh, so in order to do that, I got to get all this junk out here. So you can see here, I'm starting to make a little bit of progress on uh, gutting some of the inside of the boat, getting out uh, a lot of the stuff that the interior that needs going to need to be repaired and get access to the bulkheads to replace them. Just finished up for today. Um, I got uh, some of that stuff pulled out there. Uh, I, I, when I disassemble, I try to be really careful so that I can save things in big pieces so that when I have to build it, I have the templates and I know exactly how it's going to go together. So I got that pulled out, the closet, all the shelves out. So, and that bulkhead there is loose. It's not even though the lower cupboard's in, I'm gonna leave it there, but the bulkhead is loose so that I can put that new bulkhead in. And these aren't real structural bulkheads. They're what they call from the factory secondary bulkheads. Uh, so they just kind of help support the deck, uh, but but they're not the main the, the bulkheads that take all the load from the holes and from the rig. What I did is I rigged up a laser uh, and then, I, because the boat wasn't perfectly level, I couldn't level the... Uh, and nothing on a boat is really level, especially once you get in the water, it's not level. But I, I wanted it to be as close to factory as I could, and, and you don't want stuff to feel off. And so really, you got to level to the inside of the boat, which is basically the floor and the countertops. And hopefully when they built it, they built those fairly level. So, so what I did is, based off of the floor levels and everything, I set up my level. Um, and I didn't put it in auto level mode, I put it in manual level mode. And, and then I was able to uh, just use some paper and, and just keep measuring and taking a bunch of measurements from all over the boat until I could get basically a, a level shot all around the boat that should be level to what level should be. And then I take measurements off the other side uh, from, from the, from, I don't know if you can see the beam here, but from the laser down to the top of this uh, so that I could decide at what level, um, how far up I need to jack these. And so I just jack it up and then I cut a two by four that's the right width and wedge it in there so I can take my jack out. Uh, and so I, I've got these and, and these are all leveled up uh, to basically where it should live. Uh, and then I can come back and fix it. And then it was nice to, to double check because see this bulkhead that was ripped, when you come back and put it together, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it lines up basically. And so then I know, okay, I'm back to the factory original height. And it, it was pretty close. I mean, I'm within an eighth of an inch, uh, which is pretty good for the for the whole width of the boat. Uh, so now that I got it leveled, uh, this section, and as I did that, the windows started to line up. Everything just kind of starts to line up. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to level the roof the same way. And then once we're in the factory position, then I can go and start tackling one little job at a time. I do have to say, Antares Yachts is awesome. So I sent an email uh, to Beth at Rumline Yacht Sales. They're the North American um, retailer for uh, Antares Yachts. And she put me in touch with uh, Sancho at the Antares factory. And he sent me these. These are all the lamination schedules for the parts that I need to repair on my boat. So I can put the exact same fabric, the exact same core in the boat and make it factory. Uh, he sent me these. Uh, the only problem is they're in Spanish, but my, fortunately my Spanish between uh, my Spanish and Google Translate, I was able to figure it out. But Sancho even offered to hand translate these for me. So I, I just can't say uh, enough about how wonderful that factory is. And they, they said no problem. They can make any part that I want uh, and send it up to me. Uh, so when I get to some of the detailed parts that I have issues with, uh, they'll, they can fabricate them and send them to me. After two hours of driving, I have arrived at Merit Supply. Merit Supply was the only place that I could find that had on, that was close to my house that had the core cell that I needed. So um, I'm just waiting for them to unload it. It just came in and I guess it came in on the bottom of their shipment. Uh, 
Oh, I got it all to fit. I really need to get a pickup truck, but this works. Now, two more hours and I'll be back home. You know, you get the you, I, you get the stuff in, right? Uh, well, the glass isn't here yet. I'm waiting for the glass to come. But I've got all the foam core. I've got plywood. I've, I've got the, uh, the resin. I'm all ready to go. But if you just start slapping it on uh, before you just get everything just perfectly aligned, you're going to pay the price in the end. It's just not going to look good. And I want this thing to, to, to really look great. Uh, so you got to get it all perfect. And so once I get all this exactly squared up and uh, I've been working on this all morning, so I've got probably three or four hours in it. I've probably got three or four more hours before I get everything exactly where I wanted it. The fiberglass that I was waiting for showed up and then I was going to be ready to get started. It's so crazy hot in here. Uh, Florida for you. I think it's like 99 degrees today or 100 degrees. Uh, however, with my AC, it started at 95 degrees and we've got it all the way down to 95 degrees. But uh, it doesn't help much, but man, standing in front of it is the only way I can work. So the first problem here is this little gap. Uh, so I'm trying to get everything to line up perfectly and I believe these things are, from measuring the other window, these things are supposed to touch. So I got to figure out how to get this post pulled over. All right, check this out. I am done. Oh, just kidding. So <laughs> this is this uh, this board here is just a brace I put up. Uh, well, it's more of a form. And so once I get this in position, I use this rope all the way back to one of the winches in the back of the boat and this clamp here and the jack on this post got this post basically right in the spot where it should be. Now I'm screwing this in and I'll probably put another stiffener behind it uh, and that'll form the mold basically for the, the new post. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna build out the post. Basically, I'm gonna cut out everything that's there on this post. Um, everything you see here, I'll cut that out. And then um, I'll use this to essentially build a brand new one of these guys uh, right there. Be good as new. So the post is gone. Actually, both sides, the core, the inside, and the outside. So I tried to save them just in case I need to check any templates, but my new post is drawn in on this. So the next step is to feather. So when you attach, and I'm no expert on fiberglass here. I just know what I've seen online. Thanks to uh, Andy from Boatworks Today. Check his channel out. But uh, this stuff here, we need to feather it back. So we'll feather this back. We'll feather that back. And then I'm going to lay the glass here lay the foam core. I'm probably going to vacuum bag it. I'll decide whether I'm going to vacuum bag it or not. And then um, we'll come back and feather, feather this one, feather this one, and then put the top layer on top. So let's get started. So this is a momentous day for me. I think I've been working six months or so, six, seven months on this project and have not yet laid a piece of fiberglass to repair the boat. It's all been getting it here and then all the other uh, rigmarole that's involved with that. So, I feel like there should be a ceremony. I've got it prepped up. Let's do this. Typical Florida thunderstorm just sneaks right up on you. Interrupted by another rainstorm. Let's see how this thing turned out. I got the, um, the base layer tapered in and, and on there I got the core in. And I got th this tapered back ready for the new layers of glass. So I'll probably put one layer of glass today and that'll probably be it. Put some fairing on and then a few more layers. I think it's like three or four more layers. I have to check on the uh, specs, but I want to get uh, something on there, get the foam covered up today. Plenty strong. Well, I mean, it's not really plenty strong. All I have is basically two layers on each. Uh, and it, so it'll get double or triple that thickness. I have to check the, um, the factory spec again. I'll of course cut the, um, cut around the, the edges so the window has its shape again, and then um, finish off the roof. And then I'll have a boat that doesn't leak anymore, which will be good. Let's take a look at some of the different popular cores that are used in boat building today. So PVC, probably the most popular foam that's used today. Uh, and it goes by Divini Sale. And these are some samples I ordered from a company called Carbon Core. Um, and and there's, there's several different brands of this. This is probably most popular. It's extremely strong. Um, I mean, this is, this is almost like having a piece of wood here. 
but it's extremely lightweight. Uh, the next one uh, is SA Anor Sand Foam. This is what I'm using, and the, the name brand on this is Corsell. And um, the reason I'm using this is because it, when they built the Antares boats, Corsell is what they use, and I'll talk about why I want to use the same core in that. Uh, here again, it's extremely strong and stiff material. Um, the next one, and the, the next one is PET T foam or PE foam. And the advantage of, of, of this foam, it doesn't have quite the same material strength, although it's still pretty strong. It doesn't have the same material strength, but it's a lot less expensive. Problem with sand foam, PVC foam, it is extremely expensive. For three quarter inch, four by eight sheet, I paid like $300. Uh, this stuff is probably half that, or at least somewhere in that ballpark. Anyways, it's a lot less um, for for this, but it's close to the same material strength. So um, yeah, so this is a pretty good foam. Uh, the next option is honeycomb core, and this has a plastic honeycomb on on top. This has some advantages and disadvantages over foam core. Uh, so it's not to say it's a bad material or it's a good material. It's just different depending on what you what you want. It's not quite as stiff, and so it's a lot more flexible. Um, and one of the problems with it, it's also, it's harder to, uh, fair the outsides. And a lot of times you, because there's a little bit of texture here, you won't get as fair of a surface, at least as easily. Um, and, but it's still a great material and it's, it's extremely, uh, strong as far as its flexibility, because, you know, you trade off the brittle, it, it's not as brittle, so it'll flex a lot more, but it's also not as stiff. Uh, so that's honeycomb. Uh, and then there is polyurethane or PE foam, or sorry, PU foam, uh, polyurethane foam. The problem with this, it's friable. This is what they use, This is what they make a lot of surfboards and things like that out of. So if you can see here, the material properties aren't the same. I can squish it, and it just kind of falls apart here. Uh, this is is not nearly as expensive. Uh, and, and it works, um, but there's no way that you'd want to use this on a boat uh, with, with the waves, with, with, the, with the pressure, you're, you're going to break. I mean, the boat is not going to be strong enough with this foam, um, at, at least not for an ocean-going boat. Uh, and then the other foam that I'll show you here, which really isn't even an option. Some people think, oh, I'm going to build a foam cord boat. I'm just going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy styrofoam. Styrofoam is not used in boat core building. The reason? This stuff is not strong. Look, I can push it. I can push it down. This thing just falls apart like nothing. They, they, there's just no comparison. This is not the same material as this PVC. This is solid like wood, right? This is stiff. This is strong. This is nothing. And and, and so if you want to try to build a boat like this, yeah, it might work. It'll float. But uh, what the longevity is of it and how strong it, it's going to be, it's just not going to work. And I certainly wouldn't trust it to go in the ocean with it. And, and even for the interior. So for, for my boat, um, the current interior of the boat is built out of a, a wood honeycomb. They've got a wood veneer uh, with a paper, a resin-infused paper honeycomb. Very similar to this, but it's paper. Uh, and it's, it's pretty lightweight. But I don't want to go for the, the wood look uh, in the boat. I want to go with something a little more modern. So I'm probably going to use... Um, PE foam or PET foam uh, for the interior. Uh, I'm I'm not even going to use uh, poly polyurethane or styro. You know, I wouldn't even consider styrofoam. But um, polyurethane, people have done it with mixed mixed luck, and so it's not that you can't do it. Um, it's not that you can't do it with, with styrofoam. There's a big thing where people build uh, van interiors out of the styrofoam, so you can do it. But I'm going to use PET foam uh, probably. I might use honeycomb, so I'm going to do some more experiments before I make my official decision. For the exterior, it's important to use the same material that was used on on the original boat when you're doing a repair because you don't want any hard spots. And so what will happen is if, if you have a certain stiffness in it and then you put in something like honeycomb, Right, so say I have PVC foam and I put in honeycomb here. This is a lot more flexible than the PVC foam, and you'll probably be okay, right? It'll probably be okay in most most cases, but you might get stress cracks eventually, and it might give you problems. And so, to to, to build it back to no worries, strong as or stronger than factory, you want to use the original type of material. If you got some value out of this video, please like it. And then subscribe so you can join us next episode when we start on the cabin roof. Leave me some comments and let me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong and how I can improve these videos to be what you want them to be. Thanks for joining me.